Welcome back to the Old Soul Millennial channel. In some of my previous videos, I just finished refurbishing my Davis Vantage Pro 2 weather station. This is an older unit, but I was successful in refurbishing the unit. Some of the things I did, I replaced the motherboard, I replaced the solar panel cover that protects the motherboard. I also replaced a potentiometer, yes, the potentiometer for the wind direction vane as well as replacing a reed switch for the rainwater metering system. And now, this weather station is 100% functional. This station is fully operational. Anyway, now I need to mount this weather station to my shed. I've determined that to be the safest location for me to mount it. The peaks on my roof are pretty steep and I'm not the most comfortable with being up there and I don't want to put holes in my roof. So I'm going to attach this weather station to the side of my shed. In today's video, I'm going to take you along and show you how I plan to mount it. All right, folks, so this is the pipe I picked up out of the trash. This is inch and three quarter OD galvanized steel pipe. And I think it was previously used for chain link fencing. If you're trying to find pipe like this, just look for chain link fencing pipe and you'll find it at all the big box stores. I plan to add some blocking to the side of the shed. And then I'm gonna use these U clamps, galvanized U clamps to mount the pole to the side of the shed onto that blocking. And once we get this plumbed up, this will make for a perfect spot to mount our weather instruments to. Now something really important that I need to talk to you about, and also one of the reasons as to why I am not mounting it onto my house roof, is that when you add a steel pole to the top of the structure, to the top of a structure, this creates a perfect spot for lightning to hit. So, Having it on the shed, I don't really care about the shed too much. On the house though, I very much care about the house and I don't want to create a spot where lightning is uh, more likely to hit. Even though I will be putting this on the shed, I do plan to ground this out with some of this copper wire that I had saved and I never brought to a scrap yard, but I'm gonna mount this to these two clamps and then we're gonna to have to add a grounding rod. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not an electrician. I'm not licensed or trained in properly grounding equipment, so please do your own research, but I just want to make you aware of the dangers of adding a steel pole to a structure and what could potentially happen. So again, I'm going to do the best I can to ground this and try and make it as safe as possible. I don't really care about the shed, but I care about the house. So don't add a pole to your house unless you're going to ground it properly. See how strong this is. I think that'll do it. Check the top one. That should do. Alright, so as you can see, we have the blocking installed. It's nice and strong. 
Only other thing you may want to think about doing if you're doing this on a structure that you really care about would be to maybe add some flashing, but I'm not concerned about it. Anyway, getting this pole perfectly plumb may seem a little bit tricky, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. So first thing I'm going to do is take my four foot level. I'm going to start at the apex of the roof because I want this pipe to be in line with the apex. Apex is the highest point. What I'm going to do is just line it up, get the level nice and plumb. I'm going to draw a line going straight down the blocks. Now that I have a plumb line going down these two blocks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insult the lower bracket and we'll partially install the pole and then we'll work on the upper bracket. So now I have the lower clamp partially installed. It's not tightened up, but now I'm gonna take my smaller magnetic torpedo level. I'm just gonna check to make sure that this pole is plumb from side to side. We'll work on the in and out a little bit later here, but the first thing we need to do is get the plumb from side to side. Right, that looks good there. Now I'm gonna temporarily install the upper bracket. Now I have my two brackets temporarily installed. I actually back them out a little bit, but they are in a plumb line and that's what you want. Now, my technique for grounding probably doesn't comply with the NEC code, but what I'm gonna do as I lift this pole up here, I'm just gonna sneak this copper wire in between the bracket and the pole uh, on both portions, which probably isn't necessary, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then we'll tighten down the brackets We'll check for plumb, side to side plumb, which it should be perfect. And then the in and out, we do need to adjust that. My plan is to use these plastic shims and I'll just insert that behind the pole on the upper portion or lower portion to ensure that we're plumb in and out as well. <laughs> this looks pretty cool. Side to side plumb is about perfect. Now in and out, it actually has to go out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, try and figure out how much it's gotta go out, but again, I'm just gonna use that plastic, those plastic shims there. It's like it needs to go out about an eighth inch. So I'm gonna loosen up this top bracket. Take my shim here put it behind the pole. It's pretty darn tight. Let's give that a look. That's too far. I gotta use smaller shims. I'm happy with that. Look at that. That is perfectly plumb. Strong enough for what I need. All right, so it's time to start installing the instruments onto this pole. Now, again, the curvature in this 
wind vane should point due north. And as for the solar panel on the transmitter and rain metering system slash temperature humidity sensor, well, that solar panel is going to face due south, so these should be opposing one another. Now, I'm going to start this on the lower end of the pole. And then before I tighten it up, of course, we'll get it into position. was attached to the pole. Now for the other section of this weather station, I think I'm going to space it about a foot and a half away from the other bracket. From here, the temperature sensor is probably three and a half feet, maybe, yeah, about three, three and a half feet away from the roof. And my concern is if I mount this too low, it may start picking up off the radiant heat coming off the roof. So I, I do want to keep it as high as possible, but I also don't want it to interfere with that weather vane. Maybe we'll pick it up just a little bit. I think something like that. Yeah. Let's just make sure that it's due south and we'll bundle this project up. Solar panel is facing due south. It's picking up some good solar energy right now. So now I'm just going to tighten up these bolts. We'll reinstall the rainwater collection funnel and we'll tighten up some of these wires with some zip ties. Just finished tidying up everything with zip ties and everything looks really good. And all I have to do now is just work on this copper grounding line. I believe I'm going to run it parallel to the ground to this point. And then once I get to the corner, I'm just going to run it down along the back side of the shed. I was thinking about running it back up and kind of hiding it up behind the fascia, but I figure it might be better if we have a more direct path. Would look cleaner though, but whatever. rod I know it should be probably either a copper coated or a bronze rod or, I mean, I'm sure there's some specific requirement but I'm just using a piece of square steel solid square steel I figure it's better than nothing Here's the completed product. We have our weather station on that inch and three quarter galvanized steel pole. The copper wire clamped onto that pole. The copper wire runs parallel to the ground and goes vertically down along the corner of the shed down to our grounding rod. Now my question for you, if anyone out there is an electrical inspector, let me know what I did wrong here how I can make this a bit better. Sure that I have as much lightning protection as possible on this pole. I mean, in, in actuality, it's probably pretty unlikely that lightning strike will hit the shed, but it's nice to know that I have a little bit of protection. Thanks for watching. 
Catch you on the next one.